It gives me immense pleasure to welcome the Foreign Minister of Luxembourg to his first ever visit to Pakistan. So welcome to Pakistan. We've just had um, delegation level talks in which we discussed um, a host of issues of mutual interest. We talked about bilateral trade, we talked about uh, investments. Uh, Luxembourg is a small European country, but uh, it is uh, an important uh, financial center of Europe. Uh, we also um, discussed uh, Pakistan's interest in the European Union and uh, how we can further promote uh, our relationship with the European Union and how we can uh, see the next uh, summit level engagement uh, between Pakistan and, and the European Union. We had a discussion on, um, on uh, areas of uh, you know, uh, interest to Pakistan. I gave the Foreign Minister of Pakistan's point of view the steps we had taken um, on the FTF uh, and uh, the, uh, the the commitments that Pakistan is trying to fulfill. I also uh, shared with the Minister Pakistan's position on the uh, nuclear supplies group and our interest there. We also discussed the uh, regional situation. I gave him the views and the developments, recent developments that have taken place on the western side in Afghanistan, vis-a-vis -vis peace and uh, uh, reconciliation. And the minister has just come from Afghanistan. He's met uh, leadership there. He's uh, been exposed to the conditions over there. And uh, I've shared him Pakistan's perspective. I also discussed uh, with the minister the late and diffuse tensions within the region and promote peace. Uh, so I welcome you again and thank you for visiting us. Thank you, uh, dear colleague, uh, Minister Kereshi, uh, for this warm uh, hospitality. It's uh, the first time that I am in uh, this big country, number six concerning population in the world. And I'm very honored to be received here with my delegation and also with uh, journalists from, uh, from uh, Luxembourg. So uh, the first thing I wanted to say is that um, we showed, we have shown solidarity with the people of Pakistan in the past. We tried to show it. Luxembourg has provided uh, substantial humanitarian assistance uh, in the aftermath of the strong earthquake. Uh, with, uh, which hit uh, northern Pakistan in 2005, and I remember when he went very well. It was the year of our presidency of the European Union at this time, and the same response uh, after the massive uh, floods, which is, uh, devastated uh, large parts of Pakistan in 2010. Uh, recognizing the huge burden caused by the significant number of Afghan refugees living in Pakistan, at a certain moment, more than 4.5 million uh, Afghans lived here. Luxembourg has also been supporting the operation of the UNHCR in support uh, of refugees and displaced people in Pakistan. Uh, since 2010, dear colleague Luxembourg support to Pakistan has reached about 6 million euros. Uh, with Minister Kereshi, uh, we have agreed our, that we can increase and deepen our um, trade and economic uh, relations in the future. On migration, uh, I must tell you that, uh, yes, the burden sharing and how to address uh, vast uh, migratory movements and refugees in protected solutions, we know uh, in Europe uh, what migration means, but you here in this country, you know it also, uh, as I said, uh, above all from uh, Afghanistan. Uh, we try to address the issue and to help integrate as asylum seekers, but also to provide the best possible outcome uh, to those who don't qualify for international protection. And we spoke about this 
and uh, I think that uh, everybody understood that here we have we need a very good and a positive uh, cooperation. Uh, the new EU-Pakistan strategic engagement plan in its final stages uh, is in its final stages of adoption, and uh, it is foreseen that maybe in a few months uh, before the elections, the European Parliament, uh, Madame Mogherini, will be here in your country and you try to settle this, uh, this new strategy, strategic plan. Uh, we expect the plan to be signed, as I said, uh, at the occasion of the next strategic dialogue between the European Union and Pakistan, which is expected at the end of March, as I said here in Islamabad. Jammu and uh, Kashmir, the minister uh, explained me and our delegation uh, his uh, view, and I can only say that um, the whole international uh, community was, uh, has expressed uh, serious concerns about the recent uh, dangerous escalation of tension between India and Pakistan uh, following the 14th February attack in Jammu and uh, Kashmir and uh, the downing of uh, two uh, Indian aircraft. And uh, really, I have stressed that it is of utmost importance to de-escalate the situation, and the minister agreed with me. We said both the same thing, and in this regard, we highly welcome the gesture of uh, Prime Minister Khan uh, to return the Indian uh, pilot immediately to uh, India, and I uh, will thank the Prime Minister when uh, we meet later today. Uh, the world, I think, uh, is already witnessing too many conflicts. Uh, no one wants to see an armed conflict between Pakistan and India. Uh, the EU has stressed that it stands ready to strengthen its cooperation and dialogue and, uh, on counterterrorism, both uh, India and uh, Pakistan. On uh, Afghanistan, yes, uh, we just have been in Afghanistan two days ago. Uh, the most important neighbor, I think, of Afghanistan is uh, Pakistan. And uh, we appreciate the effort of all international and regional actors who try to bring the conflicting uh, parties uh, to the negotiation table. We believe that Pakistan has a very important influence in this uh, regard and uh, that uh, this is an historical moment to use its leverage to deliver peace uh, in the region. Uh, dialogue between the Afghan government and the Taliban uh, should start as soon as possible, really to try to find solutions. Uh, we have information when it had been in Kabul that this is an ongoing process in Goa, and really this could bring uh, radical change if there is a positive result in uh, um, Afghanistan and also uh, in the interest of uh, Pakistan. So we welcome also Pakistan's efforts to facilitate talks between the US and the Taliban, and I encourage, if I can say, uh, uh, Minister Qureshi to continue this engagement in support of Afghan peace, which uh, will bring benefits in terms of regional uh, security. On religion, uh, last word, uh, Christians and Hindus make up the largest minority groups in Pakistan, which is uh, overwhelmingly Muslim. Uh, we have uh, witnessed that uh, Pakistan's Christians, like other religious minorities in the country, can be the target of escalating attacks in recent years. Uh, the EU is concerned that the space for religious minorities might be shrinking, but as uh, the minister told me, the biggest number of victims are not uh, Christians or Hindus, Hindus, but are Muslims. So um, the EU is engaging with the Pakistani authorities on promoting the issue of tolerance between freedom and religion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Excellency. We'll take a few quick questions, Chief. The question is for? Uh, for Minister. Thank you, sir. Hamza Rehman is here from the Associated Press of Pakistan. And on behalf of my Pakistani media colleagues, I personally welcome you in Pakistan to you and your media team as well. So my question is uh, that uh, a recent regional situation is very and uh, 
President Peace has been challenged by Pakistani neighbor India. Mm-hmm. You have very well mentioned that Pakistan efforts to defuse the situation. My question is that how Legal Bakshi's Pakistan rules to defuse the situation and what the role your country can play in this regard? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Our role can only be played in the European Union. I think we are uh, in the European Union, as a lot of countries in Europe, promoter of uh, stability in this region. I think that uh, what I said, uh, I have nothing to add. Uh, the world cannot really, uh, the world has to avoid conflict and armed conflict between India and uh, Pakistan at this moment. I think in the past you had four wars. The last war was in 1999. So uh, really, uh, this uh, disescalation from both sides, uh, spontaneously from your side here in Pakistan with the release of the uh, pilot, and I think also that the uh, minister, the lady minister of foreign affairs in India, said the same that India has no interest to escalate uh, the situation. And therefore, as European Union, we can only help both sides really uh, to. Yes, to uh, start a dialogue around the table and try to find a solution. I know that it is not only about terrorism, but maybe that uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Pakistan is right, that the Nobel Prize will be uh, for the men or for the women who can find a solution on Kashmir. Thank you very much, Excellency. Luxembourg is part of the European Union. European Union is very important to Pakistan, uh, our major trading partner. We have a lot of Pakistanis living in Europe. Uh, they're contributing to the economic development uh, of Europe. Uh, we are in the process of negotiating a new strategic engagement plan for the European Union. So we have a deep interest in uh, in uh, of the European Union, and obviously Luxembourg is part of the European Union. We feel there's a lot of potential for investments in Pakistan. Uh, there's a lot of uh, potential for enhanced bilateral trade and European trade and Pakistani trade. Uh, uh, so I see, uh, I see uh, a lot of potential ahead, and uh, we will encourage. Uh, further engagement and interaction with all European countries. And I shared with the Foreign Minister that on the 12th, I'm expecting uh, the Foreign Minister of the largest European economy, Germany, to Islamabad. Uh, from my point of view, you know, maybe you know, the idea that we have now an investor in, in, uh, uh, in Pakistan, uh, Mark Hübsch, who is the ambassador in China, but uh, China is a small country, so uh, we can uh, do it on both sides. <laughs> that's uh, number one. Number two, uh, I think everything in Europe on trade depends on the quality of the agreement that we will find uh, Pakistan and the European Union. And uh, number three, we have 186 Pakistan people in Luxembourg. So uh, our numbers are not with a lot of zeros, but uh, only the, the three first, so 187. Uh, in Pakistan, I think you have 205 million people living, so 187 live uh, in Luxembourg. But uh, there is one point on green bonds. Uh, we spoke briefly uh, this morning on green bonds that could be interesting for Pakistan. And uh, the ambassador, Pakistani ambassador in Brussels will uh, have contact with us in Luxembourg, will explain him the system, and maybe here it could be a start 
for the new ambassador to to bring something on the paper. Thank you, Minister. Uh, my question is with Prime Minister that, uh, as you rightly pointed out, that uh, Luxembourg is one of the very uh, country which is a small but economic hub in Europe, the European Union. So, any concrete steps which have been discussed during your uh, visit about uh, enhancing bilateral relations, especially with focus on trade and investment? Yes, uh, we we uh, we discussed uh, a number of potential areas for for investments and. Uh, I'll share them with you, infrastructure and uh, communication technology, uh, health sector, clean energy, uh, environment, and gem and jewelry. Uh, you know, we have the expertise, and we have uh, excellent stones, so there can be uh, a mutual interest in that. Last question, please. Yeah. Well, Pakistan would welcome uh, any mediation from the European Union. Uh, Pakistan has uh, written to the Secretary General of the UN. I've also written to the President of the Security Council, uh, asking them to play a role in diffusing the situation and the helping us de-escalate. Uh, they have a responsibility. Uh, Jammu and Kashmir is on the UN agenda. There are a uh, um, number of uh, uh, Security Council resolutions remain unimplemented, so they have a responsibility. Uh, I, I am uh, grateful uh, to the role played by the European Union in helping uh, de-escalate. Uh, we welcome that, and uh, if uh, Europeans uh, can uh, mediate, we would, Pakistan would welcome it. Uh, India has always preferred bilateralism. Unfortunately, uh, they have shied away from bilateralism as well. Uh, when a third party approaches them, they say, no, we've got to do it bilaterally. And when we engage them, and they say, no, we're not ready for engagement. So Pakistan would welcome a third party facilitation. And if the European Union can do it, so be it. We have to, in the European Union, we have to mediate between us to yeah, find a way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, if this is a request, and if uh, uh, I think in the European Union, nobody would refuse a role to mediate between India and Pakistan, or Pakistan and India. Uh, I want to precise that uh, the, European, the mediation potential of uh, EU will not be strong enough to solve the conflict in Kashmir. You, you agree? I, what I said in the end. I, I, mean, I, yeah. <laughs> no, I said, I said we, are, we are ready to mediate between India and, uh, and Pakistan, or Pakistan and India, mm -hmm. uh, but our media mediation potential is not strong enough to solve the conflict in Kashmir. No, 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 no don't understand me. Understand me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you.